Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, 2021 KubeCon. Here is the signaled intro and the deep dive talk. My name is Dan Chen, and I am the software engineer from Google and currently working on GKE and Ansos. I'm one of the founding engineers for the Kubernetes and uh, uh, initiate the signal the com community back in uh, 2016. Hi everyone, I'm Derek Carr. I'm an engineer at Red Hat. I work on uh, upstream Kubernetes as well as our distribution at OpenShift. Uh, with Don, I've been working on Kubernetes since uh, the pre-Kubernetes 1.0 days, and I'm happy to hear and talk with everybody. Hey everyone, I'm Alana Hashman. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, where I work on the OpenShift Node team. I've been contributing to Kubernetes since about 2018, and I work upstream on the Node team, as well as in SIG instrumentation and the production readiness review team. Hello, I'm Sergey Kanjelev, and I work for Google. Um, I work on GKE specifically, and uh, I was involved into Kubernetes for over a year now, and I'm super excited to be part of Signal. Uh, so, Don, uh, can you tell us about uh, Signal? Okay. Before getting into today's agenda, I want to briefly mention the previous Signal update made by Alala and Sergey back in May at the KubeCon uh, Euro. And click, uh, click each of those links, you will see the watch of the record uh, video and also slides. Next. Here's today's agenda. We are going to first introduce Signal's responsibility. Then we are going to talk about the current activities, the roadmaps for uh, 1.22 and 1.23. Then we are going to talk about some interesting projects and efforts currently driving by Signal the community. For example, 1.22 Pod Life Cycle Refactory, CI sub project continue from last uh, updates. Then finally, we are going to talk about the bug triages. At the end, we are going to talk about how to get involved and how to get help. Next. What is the SIG node and its responsibility? Let's briefly talk about the node responsibility in Kubernetes first. Kubernetes is a cluster orchestration solution for containerized applications and services. Those containers include of the Kubernetes control plans are running on the nodes. On each node, there is an agent called Kubernetes. Kubernetes register node to Kubernetes master. Kubernetes together with container runtime manages pod and the containers life cycles on the node. Set up, run, tear down, and clean up. Kubernetes also does the node level resource management, such as ensure applications get the request resource detects the node-level resource starvation issues, and takes action to prevent out-of-resource situations. Kubernetes also sends the status back to the control plane. Next. In summary, Signode owns all controllers running on the nodes, which ensures node itself and applications running on, on it running happily. Uh, Signode is very large and owns many projects. And, and, uh, and you can click the, all those following of the links. You can find uh, so many interesting projects and also the tools and the demons to ensure of the load healthiness. Next. So thank you, Dawn. Um, let's talk about uh, Signal Roadmap. Um, as, as we mentioned, Dawn, we already did a uh, talk in the past, in May, uh, about uh, roadmap and what we planned for 122 release. I wanted to refresh, like, and tell tell what we actually delivered in 122 in terms of caps. By the way, cap is a uh, our way in Kubernetes to track features and improvements. It's uh, it's a short for a Kubernetes enhancement process, and uh, we track all the caps through different stages. And uh, this list uh, shows caps that we've been working on in 122 and actually merged it. Um, I tried to split caps into themes. And it's really hard to split into uh, anything into themes. Uh, a theme is not an attribute of a cap. It's just uh, our way to attempt to group it to demonstrate what we've been working on. 
I think uh, it's important for Kubernetes to stay on the edge of which workload we support, uh, be it in uh, high performance uh, applications or some databases. Uh, uh, I mean, we try to support as many workloads as possible and we constantly improve uh, how we support these workloads, how, to, how we make uh, it possible to run applications with uh, high availability and high performance. Um, Another th uh, things are reliable operations. It's uh, critically important to stay reliable and uh, secure by default. And we're also constantly working on cleaning up a code base and uh, uh, no permanent betas is a, um, a topic that is always on top of our mind uh, to clean up code base and make sure that we have a way for new features to come in and uh, uh, deliver a lot of value for users. Um, I don't want to go into details of every single cap we've been working on in for 122, and uh, you can go to previous talk to uh, listen what we've been planning to work on and uh, get some details. Um, I just uh, I wanted to highlight again, these caps are by no means ordered in any priority order. For everybody, priority is different. Some people care about some features, other people will care about other features. So I just uh, ordered that by number, by cap number. You can see it in the end, um, end of uh, every link. Mm -hmm. So, and it's also hard to structure uh, and uh, categorize caps into uh, themes. For instance, uh, node swap support that Elana, you worked on, it can be, uh, attributed to both to support more workloads, like some AI workloads that loads uh, huge data models, or it can be attributed to reliable operations. Which one do you believe it uh, applies the most? I mean, uh, to some extent, it's a bit of both. Uh, honestly, uh, for the alpha, to some extent, I think we're targeting uh, reliable operations, uh, maybe more so than workload support, because swap is currently only tunable at node level rather than for each individual workload. Uh, however, uh, you are currently allowed to, with the alpha, uh, let workloads use uh, up to unlimited swap on the node uh, or no snot within the constraints of C groups. So uh, it's giving folks some options, and uh, I'm also excited to continue working on that in the 123 cycle. And Derek, I know that another highlight of, uh, of this list is uh, memory cost support. It's a seemingly easy feature that uh, allows to set up requests and limits for memory and make it more reliable. How long did it take to get to the alpha stage of memory cost? Yeah, it's a great question, Sergey. So uh, I think C Groups V2 has been a, a journey in the Linux community and then as well in the broader Kubernetes community. Um, it's important that as the underlying operating systems that Kubelet is orchestrating to run containers on, that we keep up with emerging uh, changes at the actual host itself at the Kubernetes tier and take advantage of them. A lot of folks might not realize today that the memory request on a pod when running on a C Groups V1 host isn't actually used to provide any quality of service guarantee uh, to that container beyond just a minimal scheduling guarantee. Um, so we're excited about some of the new features in C Groups V2 uh, that we can exercise now to provide differentiated memory quads so that uh, better and more minimal guarantees can be provided via the memory dot, uh, the, the different uh, options in the, in the V2 version of that controller. Uh, I think this is an effort, Don, you and I have talked back on since probably the last five years. And so it's been a slow uh, emerging process, but an important one we see uh, for the, the SIG going forward. Yeah, I still remember though, the first uh, out of memory and the discussing and the memory quality of the services. And there's the long list of the problem we list there. Yeah, thanks. And Don, uh, since you've, uh, uh, you've been uh, here a long time and you initiated dynamic couplet configs that currently on the list for deprecation. Do you have any hard feelings about it? Um, actually, I'm really glad that we finally decided to deprecate this one. So this, uh, I first started at the beginning about the Kubernetes at early adoption stage. And uh, we don't have like the clear of the node spec. We also don't have the clear of the standardness of the system configurations. So many users at earlier time want to uh, customize their node configurations and the specs. At the same time, we have we don't have we only we have tons of the blobs flags 
to need users to customize our offer. So, which is unstructured and is and is not manageable. So through this, we funded this project and back in 2017. And uh, so while to support this one, actually we are defining of the Kubernetes components, uh, component configurations project, which is not just for Kubernetes, actually is applied to all the control plan. And, uh, and so we draw out those things successfully a while back. So make all our control plan can be managed. Um, and uh, another thing it is, uh, we also uh, deprecated tons of uh, unused of the flags and convert them to the Kubernetes uh, config fields. And uh, over those times, and we also uh, realized how to do the more dynamically Kubernetes configurations at node level, but uh, no, no need to have this uh, 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 in, intrusive and uh, much harder to manage the dynamic uh, Kubernetes configurations. So I think this is uh, serve the purpose, our original purpose, and uh, now is the good time to deprecate this. Yeah, thank you, Don. And I want to say from myself that how much I enjoy working with you, Derek, and every member of a community. Uh, so much history and uh, hard work was put into these features and. Uh, uh, history of it is uh, quite exciting and uh, thr thrilling for me. So in uh, Kubernetes, we also committed to improve uh, our processes all the time. And uh, as part of Signal, we also committed to do the same. And uh, we run some retrospective for 122 release. Uh, I think um, it was uh, the topic of 122 release was uh, reaching new heights uh, or new peaks. Yeah, reaching new peaks. And uh, I think we reached another peak in Signal. Uh, we tracked a record, record number of 24 caps for this release. Uh, we merged 13 of them. It's a very good number, um, considering everything. Uh, two of them was exception, so very last moment. And uh, four were almost ready. So we could have done 17, uh, but uh, exception was denied by different reasons. And uh, from things that went well, uh, again, record number of people working on the record number of caps, which is great. Uh, we um, now more looking more into uh, reliability and uh, requiring end-to-end -end tests on early stages. It uh, allowed us to, got, uh, to catch some issues on uh, caps that wasn't merged, um, which is great because we, didn't, we don't want to ship something that is not working. And, uh, uh, create a better impression about alpha feature. Uh, also, we realized that uh, all small caps were very smoothly merged into release and uh, uh, no issues were, uh, on the road. So it's, it's all great. Uh, some things we plan to improve is uh, we will define a soft early deadline for PR draft uh, that will allow us to first confirm that PR, like that cap is actually on track for release. And it also will allow us to, to request early API review. This release, we realized that API review is a bottleneck for us. Too many uh, caps were trying to merge at the same time, and uh, API reviewers just don't have enough uh, bandwidth to satisfy and review everything. Uh, and then we don't have time to react on these reviews. Uh, plus, PR process um, is uh, can find a lot of issues. We just started using PR, and uh, we realized that the PR may uh, uh, early discussions in PR, uh, PR stands for production readiness review, by the way, uh, can find a lot of issues that uh, will enable smoother in implementation of a feature. Anyway, uh, great release. Uh, and uh, now we work on 122 re uh, 23 release. In 123, we, uh, I put the same themes for uh, caps. Uh, and I had the uh, same workload support, you want more workloads, uh, same secure by default. But also uh, new topics is easy to troubleshoot, uh, which is uh, topic like which is uh, something that to help us to uh, improve diagnostic stability and observability of uh, workloads and infrastructure. Uh, it's partly handled by SIG instrumentation and mostly handled by SIG instrumentation. I would say that Elana is the chair of, uh, but at the same time we uh, in Signal, also need to make some core investments in and in, uh, core features to enable uh, advanced scenarios that are outside of SIG instrumentation scope. Uh, 
Yeah, and just to jump into that, SIG instrumentation for the most part does not actually own any of the code in the various components that provide observability. SIG instrumentation owns the core library, like uh, the metrics library and, and framework in component base, but not necessarily specific metrics on each component. So it's the responsibility of each SIG, such as SIG node, to actually make investments in those areas to meet the guidelines set forth by SIG instrumentation. Yeah, thank you. And another uh, themes that I'm very excited about is intelligent operations. We want to make sure that um, uh, we minimize workload interruptions and apply some intelligence to how we do that and how we optimize resource use, for instance. Uh, intelligence is uh, uh, is replacing manual uh, labor. So this is great and uh, it's great for operators and it's great for workloads. Um, uh, with that, uh, I mean, I can uh, go into details of uh, some of these uh, uh, caps. Uh, I think uh, contingency fire is something that uh, we're long awaited for. Uh, it will enable some six storage uh, related uh, uh, features and improve some, uh, 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 en enable some workloads. Another long awaited feature is gRPC probe support. And uh, from intelligent operations, uh, uh, I'm really excited about in place pod update. This is, uh, this is something that was uh, discussed for a long time. You can see by the number of a cap, it's like 1,000 less than everything else. Um, it, uh, it, is, was, it was long discussed, and uh, finally we reached the milestone when we understand the API changes that we want to implement. Uh, so hopefully in this release, we can make it happen. So caps is... Uh, very important. Uh, it allows us to deliver new features, but also uh, as important uh, reliability, refactoring, and optimization work. And uh, Ilana will talk uh, tell us about one of the refactorings that we made in 122 release. Yeah, thanks, Sergey. So it's really important for Signo to be able to pay down technical debt uh, as we accumulate it over time. And uh, so to give you a little bit of context, uh, in the 122 release cycle, we went and did uh, some pretty substantial refactoring of the pod life cycle. Uh, so to understand that refactoring, I first want to give a very quick overview of the kubelet as part of our SIG node introduction. So the kubelet is just a controller that turns a machine into a Kubernetes node. And the code for the kubelet lives at uh, mostly in package kubelet uh, with entry points and command kubelet. Uh, and I've listed the files under the package kubelet director here if you want to go take a look at what logic lives where. Uh, but essentially, like any other controller, the kubelet manages a certain kind of Kubernetes object. Uh, in the kubelet's case, it is the pod. And it has a main sync loop. And you can find that main sync loop in kubelet.go. And the sync loop uses pod workers to track operations on pods. Uh, and you can find that logic in podworker.go. Now, each pod uh, describes a collection of one or more containers. And those containers have a life cycle that's defined in the kubelet, uh, starting in a waiting state, moving to running, and eventually being terminated. Uh, and you can find uh, more on that logic in kubeletpods.go. So on the next slide, to illustrate with a picture here, uh, this is sort of an idea of the core workflow that uh, this uh, comes from a design proposal. Uh, if you click on this slide, you'll actually get a link to that design proposal all the way back from the 1.2 uh, Kubernetes uh, release cycle and planning. So uh, the, the core design has remained the same over time. And you can see here in the middle uh, the various pod workers that the kubelet spawns in order to manage uh, various pods and pod changes. So uh, pod lifecycle refactor, why did we need to do this? Well, uh, so initially we found a bug wherein pods can set uh, on the pod specification their termination grace period seconds to zero. That is uh, when you tell the pod to terminate, uh, this is the grace period seconds that it will use by default before it tries to force kill the pod. When you set that to zero, we found a bug wherein that was accidentally causing force deletion, which was never intended uh, by design. So we went to submit a patch to fix that. And we found that when this was fixed, uh, we started finding a number of flakes in the end-to-end -end tasks, uh, as well as some failures, uh, because those 
we're relying on this uh, undefined behavior. Uh, and so in order for everything to coordinate without this forced deletion, uh, it was no longer lining up uh, as far as the timing and our end end task go. So uh, we found this new problem, which was that uh, over time, uh, the Signode code had evolved and uh, we needed to use a single source of truth in the kubelet uh, during pod shutdowns in order to avoid various things like storage uh, racing with one another. So the solution was to go back to the original design of the kubelet, uh, clean up some of these uh, drifts that happened over time, and unify all of the pod termination logic inside of that pod worker. So while fixing this, uh, we uh, have a pretty substantial test suite in Kubernetes. Uh, and we started uncovering some occasional flakes as well, which led us to find more rare bugs. Uh, so for example, uh, we might encounter a rare race condition uh, on pod startup where uh, there's a cached container status and uh, the kubelet thinks, oh, there are zero running containers, uh, which is not correct in some cases. Uh, in other cases, we found that uh, code that had been added was only checking uh, running containers, but not necessarily new types of containers, such as ephemeral containers, which would also be required as part of the pod spec. So sometimes that could cause uh, rare correctness issues. Uh, as well, uh, some loops had conf uh, confused whether a pod was terminating or already terminated. Uh, and as a result, if one, uh, for example, assumed that a pod was terminated while it was in the process of terminating, uh, then these components could race with each other because the pod wasn't completely torn down. Uh, so uh, by working through this, we were able to uh, clean up a bunch of these uh, sort of subtle rare issues that we could occasionally encounter as these flakes in our test suite uh, and uh, thus significantly improve uh, the code as part of the pod lifecycle in the kubelet. So uh, what did we learn about this? What went well? Well, we fixed a lot of these like subtle, really difficult to reproduce, difficult to debug bugs by going back and fixing this code. Uh, and as well, we found that the test suite worked out really well. Uh, it caught a bunch of bugs uh, before we went to release. Uh, and so we were able to fix a number of issues that might have been uh, sent out in release uh, before we cut the release. Uh, but because uh, the majority of our test suite uh, tends to be leaning towards uh, periodic jobs and uh, much of our most detailed tests because they can be very involved to run, they require a lot of infrastructure, uh, we still found ourselves catching some regressions uh, after the release was cut. So. Uh, as a result, uh, we found a couple of regressions very early in this 123 life cycle. Uh, and so uh, since this merged so late, uh, we are going to be working on getting those fixed as soon as possible and then backporting those back to 122 so they'll be available in a patch release. So what are we doing next here? Uh, well, we still need to actually fix the issue uh, with uh, the uh, termination grace period seconds, uh, like uh, causing pause to be forced deleted when that's set to zero, uh, and any other bugs that we've managed to uncover here. Uh, and hopefully, as such, we will then end up improving uh, the reliability. And uh, speaking of reliability, I think it's time for me to hand over to Sergey to talk about our CI sub project. Thank you, Alana. Yes. Uh... So a sub subgroup was uh, originally formed uh, as a reaction on uh, one release uh, where many release blocking tests were failing and uh, nobody were around to fix this release blocking tests. So as a reaction of that, we formed the subgroup, but now it's way more than just reactionary subgroup to fix some release blocking issues. We actually converted it into a reliability group. Uh, we work on uh, improving stability, watching kubelet uh, regressions, including performance regressions from uh, this version. And uh, ultimately, we ensure smooth releases and confidence that Kubernetes is a stable and reliable platform. Uh, CI subgroup is also a great place to start learning Kubernetes and uh, get uh, started contributing uh, because we have very friendly people and uh, uh, there is always work to do. There is always uh, work that uh, uh, easy to get started with. 
last half year, uh, we switched a lot from being reactionary to issues um, that emerging uh, and ongoing issues that uh, we just uncovered by our CI with the new check-in, so like with infrastructure change, and we moved more proactive mode where we proactively cleaning up test structures, we adding tests, we requiring tests from uh, new caps and uh, uh, doing all this uh, great activities. Um, we also start looking into reliability more and realize that uh, to be even more proactive, you need to start looking into incoming bugs. And um, for that, we want to get uh, into bug triage. So Ilana, can you talk about bug triage a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Let me talk about bug triage. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, oh, I missed the one before this. Yes, here we go. So Signode. Signode uh, has one of the largest workloads uh, in the entire Kubernetes project. I believe we're around the third largest SIG by absolute workload. And so that means in a given week, we have over 200 uh, average open PRs. Uh, we tend to merge in a given week anywhere between 20 uh, to 80 PRs, uh, both merged and closed. Uh, and over the past year, we've seen contributors from nearly 50 countries, or companies, uh, and many countries, probably more than that, uh, making contributions to Signode. Uh, so your help is needed. We've got a lot of work to do. And so how do we manage such a large workload? Well, we focus on ensuring that we have efficient processes that will allow anybody to be able to jump in uh, and work through a bunch of the stuff on our backlog. Uh, so in 121 and 122, we focused on pull requests uh, where we added GitHub project boards uh, for tracking the life cycle of PRs, both for the wider SIG and also focused on CI signal and testing. Uh, we improved our documentation uh, by adding a triage guide and a contributing file for SIGNode. Uh, and we also worked to mentor new contributors uh, via a Contribex uh, mentoring program uh, in order to help train more reviewers for the SIG. So, that's focused on pull requests. Well, in the 122 release, we wanted to start doing a better job at tracking bugs uh, because we had, uh, when we started uh, a particular bug scrub event, uh, over 450 bugs on our backlog. So I organized a very large scale uh, global event where we tracked three different regions all working together for 48 hours. We had over 90 attendees in our Slack channel uh, where we all met virtually. Uh, we had 13 region captains and mentors. And during this event, we closed 136 issues, we updated over 200, and we ensured that uh, the vast majority, 96% of SIGNODE issues, had received an update in the past 90 days. Now, uh, here are some of our stats that you can see from this event. So we really drove down the backlog. Uh, on the left, you can see the total number of bugs and issues, and on the right, uh, how uh, many have received a frequent update. So I mentioned that we previously uh, had uh, tracking on our GitHub boards for the sort of steady state of pull requests to ensure that we're tracking them throughout their life, life cycle. But we didn't have such a thing for uh, bugs. So uh, for this upcoming release, we have added a bug tracking board that we are going through every week in our CI sub project uh, and ensuring that we can be very responsive when bugs are filed against Signo that we're uh, we're answering folks, we're ensuring that if there's information needed that we request that very quickly, uh, and thus we can drive down our mean time to resolution. So uh, how can you get involved in those things? Derek is gonna tell you a little more. Yeah, so I know we're at almost at time here, but I hopefully everyone saw the themes of presentation today where that if you're looking to contribute to the SIG, we love prioritization of contributions that focus on helping us improve overall, overall stability posture. So if you're looking to uh, open up issues or provide bug fixes, we deeply appreciate those fixes that come with end-to-end -end tests demonstrating uh, the problem and the resolution. Um, for folks who want to help improve Kubernetes uh, to run more optimally, to make better use of resources on their computers, uh, we uh, welcome all contributions looking to make the Kubelet more uh, resource optimal, so better usage of CPU, better management of memory, uh, disk, et cetera. And then finally, uh, new features are, are always welcome, but they are uh, less pertinent to us than those first two principles we just talked about earlier. Um, 
uh, but we do welcome contributors coming forward and coming forward with their new ideas and new use cases so that we can ensure that the project is successful going forward. Um, great ways to get started beyond where Alana and Sergey have talked about today is just helping improve code documentation, uh, enhancing uh, the actual logging and metrics reported by our components and helping us generally keep up with the workload within the SIG. So we go to the next slide. Um, how, to, how to join. Uh, so the first step was participating in this presentation. Hopefully you saw we're, we're happy, uh, fun people to, to talk to. And so we welcome you to join one of our uh, regular SIG meetings. So uh, we have a primary meeting where we cover uh, ongoing features, caps, maybe broader design topics, as well as the CI triage meetings uh, that Alana and Sergey talked about earlier. Uh, and critically, as uh, the SIG is constructing uh, new features and evolving uh, the platform, please give early uh, feedback uh, for your own real-world environments so we can inform our future directions. Finally, if you go to the next slide, uh, you can reach out to us by joining the SIG meetings linked here, uh, as well as uh, join our Slack channel, uh, reach out and ask questions, uh, send a note to our mailing list, and uh, reach out to both the SIG chairs and any of the sub-project leads, and we'd be happy to assist. So thanks again for everyone taking the time to learn about SIGNode.